Prince of Peace Let all who've been redeemed 
Yes, 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 yes. We serve an awesome God. Come on, we want to welcome God into our worship experience on this morning. Even those that are watching us via social media, we want you to join in with us. Amen. And we want to lift up the name of the Lord. And we're going to sing this song that just simply says, Welcome Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, how many you want him in here? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, welcome. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Come on, welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Come on, let's sing that again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Welcome Holy Spirit. Come on, we are in, we are in your presence. Come on now, fill us. Fill us with your power. Live inside, live inside of me. Come on, let's go to part two. You're the living water. You're the living water. Come on. Never drowning fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, welcome, Holy Spirit. Come on, we are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside. Live inside of me. Come on, listen that again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come on, we are in your presence. We are in your presence. Come on now, fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. Come on, you're the living water. You're, you're the living water. Come on. Never drowning fountain. Come on, come. Comforter and counselor. Come on, you're the living water. You're, sing, you're the living water. Uh huh. Never drowning fountain. Uh huh. Comforter and counselor. Take complete control. Come on, you're the living water. Come on, sing, you're the living water. Come on, never, never drowning fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Oh, just say welcome, Holy, welcome, Holy Spirit. Come on, we are in your presence. We are in your presence. Come on now, fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. Come on, just say live inside of me. Sing live inside of me. Come on, just live inside of me. Come on, sing, live inside of me. Come on, live inside of me. Live inside of me. Hallelujah. Come on, live inside of me. Hallelujah. Less of me and more of you. Hallelujah. Less of me and more of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. Sing, sing hallelujah. sing Lord With my 
hands, with my hands lifted up. Come on, in my mouth filled with praise, and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless, I will bless thee, oh Lord. 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 Come on, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving. Come on, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Come on, bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on, he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. He deserves it. Come on, come on. He deserves it. Let's not pity pat God. Let's give him what he's due. Come on, come on. Somebody had plans for today and did not make it, but you did. Come on, that's enough to bless him for. The Bible declares to let everything that has a pulse. Come on, if you got a pulse this morning, praise ye the Lord. Come on, that's a command. That's that's a command. That's a command. Let, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. That's a command. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, I will bless I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, with the heart of thanksgiving, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on and give God some praise in this house. Come on and let's celebrate our leaders as they come. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the man of God asking y'all to praise God. I think y'all was asking, he was asking you. I think you think he was asking you to celebrate him. Hallelujah. I think that must have been what happened because the man of God asked you to celebrate God. He asked you to do what the word causes us to do. So if you walked in the building this morning, I just ask you to please me for a second and do what the word tells us to do. The word of God says, let everything, everything that have prayer, praise ye the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand up and give them some. Hallelujah. 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 Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. praise. I give him my praise. I give him praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Sister LaPinky, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Sister Kelly, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Brother Andrew, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Debbie, he's worthy. He's a worthy God. He's worthy to be praised. Y'all know we ain't here to hype you up, but I encourage you. Hallelujah. Don't be no, what pastor said last week, don't be no dead disciples. Hallelujah. If you dead, come and let them lay hands on you. Clear. Clear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep going on. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. I already done the scripture to call the worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you just continue standing, we're going to do our scripture reading. It will be Ephesians 14 and 7 through 17. 
Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. See what happened? How the enemy set you up? I left my iPad. I told my husband I don't like using my phone when I'm facilitating. Amen. I said, well, I'll just use the screen. But I'm going to tell you, technology is your friend when it's your friend. The screen's going to come on and this phone is acting funny. I got it. Amen. I command it to be so. I command them screens to come on. Amen. I command it to be so. Every technology enemy that's in here, we abuse, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. It's people on social media that need to hear the word this morning. In the name of Jesus, we ain't afraid of no demon in hell. We command them screen. We command the camera. We command the internet to take place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can pity pat with God all you want. But I'm going to tell you the word has to come through. The enemy, I don't know what you're going to do, Pastor, but that ain't happened before. We ought to get excited because the devil is scared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to calm down. 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 Hallelujah. So you know when something, the enemy is in the atmosphere, something's getting ready to happen. We closer than we were yesterday. We closer than we was at 7.45 this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to read Ephesians 3, 14 through 17. If you have your word, stand up. If you don't have your word, stand up. Amen. The word of God reads in this order out of the King James Version of the Scripture. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that we would grant you according to the riches of his glory, my God, not Linda, not Pastor, to his glory, to be strengthened with, the, with might by the Spirit in the inner man. 17, that Christ may dwell in the hearts, in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. Hallelujah! 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 In his, in his strength, in his glory. Hallelujah! That we be what? Rooted! Hallelujah! By the tree, by the rivers of water. Let your roots grow deep. Hallelujah! We know he is the rock. We got deep roots. Hallelujah! We know that no wind going to blow it down. Hallelujah! A storm may come, the wind may blow. But when you root it deep, Hallelujah. The power of God love, the power of the loves of the saints that here is solid rock will wrap you and keep you and hold you, embrace you. Man, y'all the best church on this side of Zion. That's my pastor's line. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask Elder whew, Prue to pray. Praise God. Following the prayer, because I'm ready for the word. Hallelujah. I got to go over here and do some warfare. I don't know what's happening with them cameras. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. I'm going to ask Elder Prue to pray. Following him, it is going to be the morning announcements. Following the announcement, it will be the selection. Amen. After the selection, men and women of God, we're going to ask you to stand up to your feet. Y'all already had a practice round. We're going to ask you to stand up to your feet. And thank God for the word of God. Thank God that this man of God, Vince, Pastor Vincent Watson, has traveled here from Stone Mountain, Virginia, carrying the word in his be Georgia, carrying the word in his belly. Amen. I believe that if he's in this pulpit, God has ordained his steps here. And we're going to celebrate God and prepare our tents, prepare our ears to be doers, hearers, and implementers of the word of God. Amen. We're going to have a prayer, the video announcements, the selection. You're going to stand up, praise God, and then praise God, and the man of God is going to bring God's word. Amen. In that order. Let us pray. Lord, we need you this morning. We invite you to permeate this atmosphere. 
as I sat in my seat, I, I see all these mothers in the house this morning. And I'm reminded when I was a, a little boy, my mother taught me two prayers. When it was time to eat, she said, God is great and God is good. And we thank him for our food. By his hands, we all are fed. Praise the Lord, our daily bread. And when it was time to go to bed, Mama taught me. She would say, now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to take. And then I would say, bless Mama, and bless so-and-so, and bless so-and-so. But as a little boy, my stepfather used to beat my mama, God rest his soul. And I had to pray on my own. And I would ask the Lord to bring us through. And when I would go in and see mama, mama have a, a black eye, and mama be crying, and mama would hug me. I'd try to take care of mama as a little boy, just me and her. And mama used to say, it's going to be all right, baby. She said, God is able. And so, God, I come to thank you. Because when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I came to find out that you were El Shaddai when you was Adonijah, you was Elohim. You was Emmanuel. You was the Lord strong and mighty. You was the Lord strong in battle. You was our battle axe. Lord, you was our keeper. You were the Prince of Peace. You were Jesus Christ. And Lord, we come to say thank you. We come to say thank you for being with us today. Lord, meet each and every need this morning. Lord, whatever we didn't get during the praise, whatever we didn't get during this prayer, we thank you for giving it to us in the preaching of the word of the almighty God. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We magnify and glorify you for you're worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless each and every mother in this place. And bless these men to be men. To be men to honor their women. To honor our women. To honor them like never before. Change their lives, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. And amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's give God all the praise as he's given us a new day. Welcome to Solid Rock Full Gospel Baptist Church Ministries International. If you're new to Solid Rock, we're sure you will be richly blessed by today's service. Be sure to join us for these exciting upcoming events. Here are this week's Solid Rock announcements. Happy New Year! Pastor Gregory wishes each of you a prosperous new year as we continue to keep the Lord first in our lives. Our 2022 theme is Renew, Restore, and Reset. The church committed to the Lord and the body of Christ. 1 Peter 5.10 Praise Team Rehearsal Praise Team Rehearsal is Wednesday, January 5th at 6 p.m. If you are interested in joining the praise team, please come out to the rehearsals. Friday, January 7th, 2022. Corporate prayer will be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Bible study resumes. Solid Rock will resume in-person prayer and Bible study on Wednesday, 
January 12, 2022 at 11.30 a.m. Please come out and join us. Youth Night. Solid Rock Youth Ministry will begin Youth Night on Friday, January 14, 2022 and Friday, January 28, 2022 from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Plan now to attend for ages 5 to 19. Prayer Request If you need prayer, please contact the church office at 301-499-1001. Ways to Give to be a blessing to this ministry, there are various ways to give. The Cash App, dollar sign Solid Rock 7711. Givelify, use the Givelify app to give your offering. PayPal, send your giving to office at solidrock7711.com. The Zelle app, office at solidrock7711.com. Make all checks payable to Solid Rock Full Gospel Baptist Church. For credit card transactions, use our website, www.solidrock7711.com or call the church office, 301-499-1001. Happy birthday blessings to our January birthdays. We praise God for each of you and pray you are blessed on your special day. Stay connected to us on social media. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and visit our website at www.solidrock7711.com. Thank you for joining us today. We pray you will be blessed and empowered by today's service. As our 2022 theme, Renew, Restore, and Reset the church committed to the Lord and the body of Christ. 1 Peter 
Feel your presence, God. We want you to have your way, God. Heal, set free, and deliver, God, on today, God. By the power of your word, God. Just one word from you, God, can make a difference. One word from you, God, can change the very course of our life, God. Thank you, Jesus. We need a word from you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because all I want is you. Yeah, yeah. Because all I want is you. He's here. He's here. Cause all I want is you, yeah, 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 yeah. cause all I want is you. Come on, let's tell him he's a way maker, come on, he's a way maker, oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, oh way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You're everything I need you to be, God. That is who you are, cause that is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. That is who you are. That is who you are. Now come on. How many of you know that God reigns? Come on, he reigns over your finances. He reigns over that sickness. He reigns over, he reigns, he reigns. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every. Come on, let's sing that together. Come on. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every. Come on, with power. Come on. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Come on, how many of y'all believe that? Come on, if you believe it, sing with us. Come on, with power, with power and majesty, dominion, dominion authority, you reign. Whoa, oh, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, that's it. Come on, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, with power, come on. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Come on, if you believe it, come on and sing with us. With power, come on. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Come on, we're going to take it up again. Oh, my God reigns. Come on. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Yes, it. Say, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, with power. Come on. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, let's sing that again. Let's sing that again with power. Come on. With power, power and majesty, dominion. dominion authority, We're going to take it up again. Oh, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign reigns. above every, every name. name. Yeah, yeah. Sing, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above This is the part I like. Oh, come on. Over. Come on, you're giving. You reign. Come on, let's sing that again. Over my circumstance. Come on, over. Hey, over. You give. Here we go. Oh, sing, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, keep singing. Sing, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, over my circumstance. Come on. Hope. Come on, you're giving. You reign. Let's sing that part again. Over my circumstance. Come on, over. Sing, hope. You've given me. Hey, come on. Say you reign. Come on. Say you reign. Come on, Lord. You reign. Come on, everybody sing together. Come on, you reign. Sing. You reign. You reign. Come on. You reign. You reign. Yeah, let's sing that part again. You reign. You reign. Sing. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Come on. Hey. One more time. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Hey. Come on.
Come on. No music. No, you reign. Come on. You reign. 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 Come on. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You reign. You reign. Come on. Come on, put your hands together if you know he reigns. Come on, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. If that was for me, that'd be all right. But can we clap our hands for Jesus, everybody? And while you're clapping your hands, can you begin to open up your mouths and bless the Lord your God? Come on, the Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, open up your mouths and give God glory. <laughs> open up your mouths and bless him. I can't hear nobody. Come on. Open up your mouths and bless him. He's an awesome God. He's an amazing God. He's a loving God. He's a righteous God. He's a healing God. He's a redeeming God. He's a forgiving God. He's been better to us, but he's been to ourselves. Come on, somebody. Open up your mouths and bless your God. Come on. Come on, shout out to God with the voice of triumph. The Lord our God is good. The Lord our God is great. Open your mouth and bless him. He's a holy God he is. He's a holy God, he is. He's a holy God, he is. He's a holy God, he is. Open up your mouths and bless the name of the Lord your God. God, you are great. You're omnipotent, so great. There is none like you in all the earth. <laughs> Come on, somebody bless him, somebody bless him. We came to bless the Lord. We came to bless the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was what? Glad when they said, come, let's go in the house of the Lord. If you're excited to be in God's house, if you're excited to be alive, put your hands together, open up your mouth, and give God some glory. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord. Let's exalt his name together. He's been too good not to bless him. He's been too good not to magnify him. He's been too good not to give him glory. He's been better. The old church said he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Can you testify to somebody say he's been better than me? He's been better than me. I don't know about you, but he's been better than me. He's been better than me than I've been to myself. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus, everybody in this place. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I came to bless the Lord. Come on, you don't sound convincing. You don't find convincing. Find somebody else. Find somebody else and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor. If you heard me what I said to my other neighbor, I don't know about you, but I came to bless the Lord. Put your hand on yourself and say, self. Oh, self. I came to bless the Lord. Now come on and bless him one more time. Come on. Clap your hands for Jesus, everybody. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. 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 God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Can you say that with me? God is good. How often? I said, how often? The last time I checked, the word all meant all. That means on Monday he's good, on Tuesday he's good, on Wednesday he's good, on Thursday he's good, on Friday he's good, on Saturday he's good, 
and on Sunday again, he's good. I may not have been good to him, but he's always been good to me. Is there anybody here besides myself that can decree and declare God has been good to me? If you know he's been good, say yeah. Say yes again. Take your seats if you will. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Can you just lift your hands right there where you're sitting and just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We glorify you this morning. We magnify you. You alone are worthy. You're worthy to be praised. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you. Come on, there's none like you. There is none like you. Thank you, Father. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Come on, just worship just for a moment. Lift your hands right there where you are. Let me see you one more time. There. God, we give you glory this morning. We magnify you and we bless you. You're a great God and you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for this another opportunity to come and worship your name. You said you are a spirit and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. So this morning with the sincerity of our hearts, with our hands lifted up and our mouths and we'll praise, we will bless you, oh God. For you're a great God. You're a loving God. A healing, redeeming, and forgiving God. We magnify you for this moment. And now we pray, Heavenly Father, that as your word goes forth, that you will remove me from this place and you take your place behind this sacred desk. Let them see me, you and not me, O oh God. Let them hear you and not me, O oh God. You said in your word, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And this morning we're inclining our ears unto you, saying, Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. Speak a word of life to encourage us. Someone needs to be lifted. Someone needs this word. Someone in this building and even online watching right now, God, they need this word on this morning. So I pray right now that you minister as never before. Give us what we all need to hear you say. And we receive it with joy and gladness. In your matchless Son, Jesus the Christ, name. everybody shout hallelujah. Shout it again, hallelujah. Can we clap our hands to Jesus one more time, everybody? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come. Let us go into the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. David got excited when he received the invitation to come and worship the Lord his God. And the Bible lets us know that when we enter into the word, into the house of God, we to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That means whenever we come into his house, there ought to be a praise on our lips and a hallelujah in our soul. So I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in God's house one more time. It's good to be back here with you all here at Solid Rock, uh, Full Gospel Baptist Church and National Ministries. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you all here on this morning. Can we give God a great big hand praise for the shepherd of this house, the angel of this house, and the person of my brother, my friend, Pastor Gregory Albright. Come on, clap your hands and celebrate this man of God, man of humility, a man of love, a man of compassion, a man with full of laughter and life. We bless God for this man of God. I love the Reinhardt family, you all. The 
the Reinhardt family is my family. I said, the Reinhardt family is my family. If don't nobody else claim the Reinhardt family, this one right here, he claims I'm some Reinhardt family. Amen. I know you do. I know you do. Amen. They are awesome, awesome family. They've been a part of my life ever since I was a young boy. Uh, God allowed our paths to cross in my very early teen years uh, where they set up shop in my father's ministry in Tacoma, Washington. Him and the late, lovely Irene Reinhardt, God bless her soul. God bless the life that she well lived. We love her and we miss her dearly. Uh, but ever since I was a child, this family has embraced me and loved on me and my entire family and have adopted me as a little brother. Amen. And I am part of the Ryan Hart crew. Amen. So when I was calling, every once in a while I call uh, to check on my, uh, my Ryan Hart family, and talk to the Ryan Hart girls, and reach out to me and man. For Greg number two. Little Greg. Big little Greg. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amen. I reach out to them to check on me. I was talking to Renee uh, one day, and she said, she asked me what I was doing for the holiday, and I said, I didn't have any plans. And she said, why don't you come up here and hang out with my dad over the Thanksgiving holiday? And I said, well, let me check my schedule and see what's happening. And I'll try to get back with you. I said, I'd love to come. And I give uh, Brother Ryan Hart, Pastor Ryan Hart, a call just to check and see how he's doing. He's like, Doc, I heard you coming, man. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, I'm going to be there, man. I'm going to come and hang out with you all because you all are my family. And I thank them for opening their doors to me. I've had an amazing time here with the Ryan Hart family. And, man, it's going to break my heart to leave them this evening. But I'll be back again. Solid Rock, it's good to see you all. We love you, and I am happy to be here to share this word with you. I did not come to preach, uh, but I came to preach. Hallelujah. So I pray the word that I have to share with you all on this evening, or on this morning, to be blessed by. I have the awesome privilege uh, to pastor what I believe is the greatest church in the whole wide world. You Christian, center the place where God loves you the way you are, and too much to leave you that way. And then NCC, if you're watching online, God bless you. I love you to life, and I'll see you real soon. Uh, but I thank you for tuning in and fellowshipping with us uh, here at the Solid Rock Full Gospel Baptist Church. If you're ready for a word, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout it again, hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't want to keep you all long, the hours of our spent. I know you all try to get out of here in a pretty decent amount of time. Amen. But it's not my fault that y'all let Jesus come on up in here and do what he does. All right. But I'm not going to be before you all long, but I pray you receive this word on this morning with joy and gladness. The word of God today is coming from the book of John, chapter number six. God bless these musicians, this praise team, and the ministers and elders of this ministry. God bless you and thank you for all that you've done and sown on this morning. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14 is what I'll be reading for you on today. And then I'll travel over to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse number 9. So John chapter 6, verse 1, and second Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, rather, chapter 2, verse 9. And I'll be reading from the New Kingdom version of God's holy word. If you're ready for this word, shout hallelujah. The word of God from the New King James Version reads as such. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread? that these may eat. Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have but a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, make your people sit down. 
Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in a number of about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and disciples of those who were sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he says to the disciples, gather up the fragments and remains, so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, truly, this is the prophet who has come into the world. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 reads, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man, the thing which God prepared for those who love him. And the word of God is blessed. You may be seated in his presence. I'm excited to share this morning, this message with you today. For some, this word will be a revelation, and for others, this word will serve as a reminder. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I've got more than enough. I want to minister those words to you today. I've got more than enough. For those, of you who are, for those of you who are here, and for those who are online this morning, that just helped me with this declaration of saying I just, I, that I have more than enough. I want to say thank you for your participation in saying and or shouting that statement of faith. It is certainly a statement of faith because in spite of what we just declared in saying I have more than enough, there's this thing called life in the natural, better known as reality, that begs to differ many times with our perspective. I know we said with our mouths we have more than enough, but many times lives, our lives that we live today and where we're living in life today, it begs to differ with our perspective. You see, to have enough means by definition to possess as much or as many of something or someone as needed or required. It is the required degree or extent to either meet the bare minimum or to satisfy the maximum. It is what's sufficient, what is adequate, what is ample, what is satisfactory, what is tolerable, what is acceptable and or necessary. Anything that is less than this word called enough, anything less than before mentioned is considered not to be enough, but is considered instead to be in lack. Now, I know a lot of people, and, and, and everyone I know, uh, out of the people that I know across this country, I don't know any of them that enjoy being in lack. To be in lack is the state of being without or not having enough. To be in lack means that there is something missing. There is an absence. There is a void. It is to be in want or to be in need. In lack of, it means that if you're in lack of something, it means there's a deficiency, a scarcity, an availability, a deficit, a shortage, inadequacy, dirt, deprivation, paucity, and inferiority. Being in lack is an uncomfortable state that can affect us in a multiplicity of ways. It can mess with our egos when we're in lack. It can mess with our emotions when we're in lack. It can mess with our self-esteem when we're in lack. It can mess with our hopes and our dreams, our relationships, our mindsets, even our plans when we have this thing called lack. It can lead to being discouraged and have depressive states that places us in pits that are difficult to get out of. May I submit to you all this morning that it can be frustrating not having enough to do whatever it is that you want to do in life. Is there anybody that's ever been frustrated because you just didn't have enough? This past Thursday uh, marked Thanksgiving, which is the beginning of the seasons of this year's holiday season. And, and we know this holiday season to be a season of giving. It's, it's that time of year where, where everybody wants to be a blessing in the life of somebody else. It's that time of year where parents want to go to the stores and buy for their children, where husbands want to go to the stores and buy for their wives, where wives want to go to the store and buy for their husbands, where your boo wants to go to, go to the store and buy you something to let you know just how special you are to him or her. It's that season of giving, but it's frustrating when we find ourselves wanting to give, but don't have enough to give. It's 
frustrating. It's frustrating. And, and, and many other times I remember growing up where I knew my parents uh, wanted to give to all six uh, of their children. Uh, but at our times where, where, where times were a little rough, the struggle was real. And, they didn't have all that they wanted to give to their children. And when they would come to us during these holiday seasons, we would see the disappointment in their faces when they looked at us, open up the gifts, excited about what we have, but we know we wanted more. But they just did not have enough. And it feels bad when you don't have enough to give. Then, and then, then it's also a challenge when we find ourselves in between jobs. We are in this COVID-19 season where a lot of people lost their jobs and even to this day, they're unemployed and, and they're struggling in the areas of, of their finances because, because you use your job in order to provide for yourself and to provide for your family. But it's frustrating when you don't have enough to even provide. It, it, it's frustrating when, when, when you go to the store from time to time and, and, and you got this grocery cart filled with groceries and, and you say, man, I'm going to get my eat on tonight. And you're ready and you got, and you got your mouth and your taste buds all the way ready only to find that after they rung up everything, and I mean the whole basket, boop, 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 boop. And they get to that great amount and that grand total and you get to that grand total and you go in your pockets and you... pull out that check card and you swipe only to find that you have insufficient funds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's frustrating. That's when you got a line a mile long behind you yes. after ringing up all those groceries. It's frustrating to find that even with you, you don't have enough. So we don't have enough to give. We don't have enough to provide. We don't have enough to pay. And, 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 even, and it's even as equally frustrating when we, when, we, when we find ourselves in situations where we don't have enough to fulfill what we desire in life. These hopes, these dreams, uh, these aspirations that we have even in life. And it seems like there are times uh, when we don't have enough even to give to ourselves. We don't have enough to seemingly to, what, to prosper in our lives. Not enough to give, not enough to provide, not enough to pay, not enough to prosper. What is this thing about not having enough? It's frustrating. And to add insult to injury, not only are there times when we don't feel like we have enough, but there are also times that we allow the opinion of those around us to infiltrate our thoughts by telling us that we don't have enough. We hear it so much that we begin to believe that they were right. And there are often times we accept what we hear from other people like you don't have enough education. You don't have enough know-how. You don't have the skill set. You don't have the ability. You don't have the experience. You don't have the qualifications. You don't have the finance. You don't have enough credit. You don't have enough time. You don't have enough stability. You don't have the emotional capacity. You don't have even enough anointing. And the list goes on and on about what people say you don't have enough of. Uh, 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 and we find ourselves saying to ourselves, self, we don't have enough. Now you feel like you're in a hole or a pit that you can't get yourself out of. But may I submit to you all, my brothers and sisters, this morning, that just because you are in a pit, it does not mean that you have to be pitiful. Uh, is there anybody in the room besides myself that's found yourself in a pit and feeling pitiful? But I've come to serve you all notice on this morning that this feeling that you have is just that. It's a feeling. And may I submit to you all this morning that feelings come and feelings go. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? So don't allow this pit of your feelings cause you to be pitiful because if there's anybody like myself that knows about a man named Jesus, you may not have all the money in the world. You may not have the greatest education. You may not have everything you desire, but if you got Jesus, you've got more than enough. My father used to sing a song back in the day, Pastor Reinhardt, that said, all that I need is in Jesus. He satisfies. Joy he supplies. My life would be worthless without him. 
but all things in Jesus I find. In other words, what daddy was saying in those words in that song was, what I cannot find in myself, in my areas of deficiency, in the areas of my flaws, my faults, and my failures, I still know that though I may be the littlest of things, I still have something great on the inside of me that lets me know that I still have all that I need. How are you hearing what I'm saying, church? I still have all that I need. It may not seem like it it may not sound like it it may not look like it but God wants to know that little is much if he is in it and he wants us to know if you got God you've got more than enough people are gonna look at you strange they may minimize you and tell you that you don't have what it takes they may look at your life and try to discourage you but telling you you cannot teach telling you you cannot preach telling you you'll never grow, telling you you'll never be, telling you you'll never have. In those times where we embrace, it gets engraved in your spirit, and it seems like God, God, it seems as if God himself is no longer attainable. But you need to understand and know that even though you feel like you may not have enough, God is more than enough. The task may seem greater than what I have the ability to do right now. The job may seem greater than what I'm qualified for right now. The expenses may seem greater than what I have right now, but it does not mean I cannot get what God says I can have. Is there anybody knows you can have what God says you can have? If God said in his word that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight, how much more can we do when we work together? If we give the little things to God, God will bring forth the increase. But we must tell ourselves, self, 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 huh? I've got more than enough. It's a discouraging thing discouraging thing not to have enough. I don't know anybody that finds pleasure in lack. People who are broke don't like being broke. People who are hungry don't like being hungry. People who are thirsty don't like being thirsty. People who are lonely don't like being lonely. They don't enjoy feeling the feeling of, of not having enough to do what they would like to do and or accomplish. That was the case for Gideon. When God told Gideon, I'm going to use you to deliver your people, Gideon says, how can it be me when I'm the least of my father's house and my clan is the least of all those in Israel? He's telling God, God, I don't have enough to do what it is that you called me to do. But God blessed Gideon in a way that Gideon had never thought, dreamed, or imagined by letting him know that even with little, you have more than enough. Jeremiah told God, I know you want to use me, but, but I can't be used like you want to use me because I'm just a child. But God said, don't say that you're just a child. Before you were conceived in the belly of your mother, I knew you and I preordained you for such a time as this to speak to these people. Don't say what you don't have. Don't say what you can't be. If God puts something on the inside, you have more than enough. I gotta go. Give today's story of the lesson. Story of today's lesson. We find that Jesus here, the first New Testament pastor of a mega minister. You see that Jesus in doing that all he's done in the miracles that he has rendered, now gathered a crowd of 5,000 plus men, women, and children. 5,000 followers that are key for a word from the Lord. He sat them down, he gave a teacher, he didn't have to teach them. He asked the question, since that they all were hungry. Doesn't say anybody came to Jesus and said, Lord, I'll show him hungry. Show hungry. Can you give me something to eat? But the Bible lets us know that he sensed that they were hungry. Isn't it good to know that God knows exactly what you need when you need it? So he senses that these 5,000 plus people are hungry. So he asked his disciples a question. And the question that he asked is, he, he asked the question, he said, he said, he said, he said, where? 
Where can we go to feed these hungry people? Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Philip heard this question that Jesus asked. And when Philip heard this question, the Bible says he took a look at the crowd. And when he took a look at the crowd, he answered the question by saying these words. He says, Lord, do you see all these people? He says, we don't have enough. All the money in the world that we have would not be enough to feed these people because there's so many. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. He was testing their faith. He wanted to see what the mindset of his people were. Not the people, but his people. He, he, he wanted to see what is the mindset of the believer. He wanted to see what is the mindset of those that follow me. What, what is the mindset of those that stick closest to me? What is the mindset of those that spend day in and day out with me? What is their mindset about what I have the ability to do? So he asked, he asked the disciples, he said, where can we go? Where can we go to feed these people that they may eat? Knowing what he was going to do. But he said 200 denarii. That must not have been a small amount. But 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have but a little. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But Jesus, knowing already what, going, what he was going to do, he tested the faith of his followers in asking this question. I'm amazed at how they followed Jesus and saw everything that Jesus has done, yet they still struggled in the areas of their faith. They've seen the work miracles. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the whole reason why the 5,000 were following him is because of all that they had seen and heard him do. So here the disciples, they're right there watching Jesus time after time after time perform miracle after miracle after miracle, yet still they have trouble. God is able to do. How many times has God been there for you? How many times has God stretched out his hand to you? How many times has God shown you favor, performed miracles in your life, did the impossible for you, but yet and still when the junk hits the fan, we forget everything that God has done before. As if he's never done anything for us at all. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And we struggle in the areas of our faith. He asked the disciples the question because I believe that he wanted them and for us to think bigger, think bigger than what we see. We must learn how to think bigger than what we see. What your eyes are showing to you oftentimes are lying to you because your eyes will show you and will tell you what it is you cannot do. Your eyes will show you and tell you what it is you cannot have. Your eyes will show you and tell you what it is that you cannot be. But God wants you to look beyond what your eyes are showing you. And don't see through the eyes of your sight in the natural perspective, but see through the eyes of the Spirit. See through the eyes of your faith. Watch this. Watch what Philip answers. Philip says, we don't have enough. Did you hear that? Philip said, we don't have enough. Philip says to Jesus, we don't have enough. The last time I checked this pronoun, we, for the teachers in the room, the word we is an inclusive pronoun which says, not only am I talking about myself, but I'm talking about you too. So when Philip is talking to Jesus, he's not only saying, Jesus, we the disciples don't have enough to feed them, but he's saying, you don't have enough. He's saying, you don't have enough to feed them. I can imagine that Jesus thought to himself, I didn't ask you all that. All I asked you was, where shall we go? You're going to answer with what I got? Oh, you don't. The question was not, what do 
I have? The question was, where shall we go? Philip's answer was the wrong answer. And I submit to you all that there are often times that God speaks to us and talks to us. And instead of giving God a God answer, we give God the wrong answer because we're giving God an answer based on what we see, not based on who he is. Can you see, can you see bigger than what you see? Is what you see so big that you in turn minimize yourself? I can't get it, it's too big. I can't have it, it's too big. I can't accomplish it. It's too big. I don't have enough money. It's too big. Philip did not say, I don't want to feed them, but he said it's too big of a task. He said we don't have enough. Watch this. Watch this. Philip thought he said something. After Andrew, after Andrew heard what Philip said, Andrew decides to come and co-sign what Philip was saying. All right, now, 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 now to, 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 Andrew, to Andrew's credit, he was a tad bit, just a tad bit more optimistic than Brother Philip was. You see, you see when, 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 when Andrew came along, he introduced the lad with the fish and the loaves of bread. He, he says to Jesus, he said, Lord, we have this lad that has two fish and five loaves of bread. He should have stopped with the menu. He should have stopped by just saying what they had. But instead, no, he decided to add to the equation. He decided to give his commentary on what they had and stopped. When he should have just said what the menu was alone. Had he just said, Lord, we got two fish and five loaves of bread, it would have been on and popping. But no, no, he makes the mistake of saying we have two fish and five loaves. But what is that? Amongst these that are so many. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? How often have we added our own commentary yeah. to what we have? Yeah. How often have we told ourselves where we fall short? Yeah. How often have we told ourselves what we cannot have? How often have we told ourselves what cannot be fixed, what cannot be repaired, what cannot be, what cannot be restored based on what we see right now? Why can't we just give it to God and leave it right there as opposed to saying, God, this is what it is, but this is what you can or cannot do with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we want to tell God what he's working with, we want to give him instructions. No, 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 no. It does not work like that. We, 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 we have a little bit, but the little bit is not enough. May I submit to you all this morning, what is your not enough? What is your not enough? Do you not have enough optimism? Do you not have enough integrity? Do you not have enough faith? Do you not have enough courage? Do you not have enough wisdom? Even though what Andrew offered was insufficient for the task, he still presented it to Jesus, and that's the one good thing that he did. Even though he added a little two cents in and added his commentary, it was good that he brought what he had to Jesus. You may have little, but little in your hands becomes much when it's placed in the master's hand. I said little in your hand becomes much when it's placed in the master's hand. Come here, Moses. God asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? Moses said, I have nothing but a rod in my hand. God said, no, sir. Now, when that thing's in your hand, that thing's in my hand. And when you put it in my hand, watch what I can do with your rod. Throw that rod on the ground. He put it on the ground, and that rod became a snake. He said, pick it up by the tail. He picked it up by the tail. It didn't turn around and bite him, but it turned back into a rod. What's in your hand? David asked the question, David, David, tell me, please, what's in your hand? I, I have nothing but a sling. Five smooth stones. 
David saw that sling, or rather Goliath saw that sling and, and those five smooth stones, and he began to laugh and chuckle within himself. And he said, am I a dog that you would feed me the scraps? I'm going to take this boy and feed him to the birds. Ah, but David said, contraire, mon frere. May I submit to you, you come in me with your sword, your javelin, your shield, and your spear. But I came in the name of the Lord. And on this day, y'all don't get me talking. What's the little in your hand? Ah, come here, Naaman. What's the little? All you got to do is go dip down in the water seven times. What's in your obedience? If you just dip down, his servant said, if you asked for a big thing, you would have did it. But he asked you for a small thing. Just dip yourself in the water seven times. And when he did it, he came up as clean as a baby. What's in your hand? What's in your sling? What's in your obedience? Woman with the issue of blood, what's in your faith? She said to herself, self. Self said, huh? If I can but just touch the hem of his garment, it may not seem like much to you. It may not seem like much to the onlookers, but I got a need from God like never before. And it may seem like a simple solution to you, but I got to get to Jesus. My little bit of faith is telling me that if I might do this little thing like just touch just the hymn, the underfolding, underfolding, just touch the hem of his garment, then I shall be made whole. I have just a few points of power that I want to share with you all. Then I'm going to leave you all alone this morning. First point of power is this. You got to learn to bring God your little. Somebody say, bring God your little. I know you're not working with very much. I know, I know you don't have a whole lot in your stock, a whole lot in your supply. But you got to learn to bring God your little. When the disciples came to Jesus, they said, we don't have much for this whole crowd of 5,000. But the little that we have, we bring it unto you now. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? They brought Jesus their little. And whatever it is, I can't, I'm going to tell you all this morning, as insignificant as it may be, little is much when it's placed in the master's hand and God can do a whole lot more with your little than you could ever do with it so learn how to give God your little and watch God work with it the task is big the dream is large and it seems like you don't have enough to fix your family situation it seems like you don't have enough to fix your finances. It seems like you don't have enough to fix that brokenness. It seems like you don't have enough to fix your health situation. But if you bring your little, bring your little to God and watch God work with your little. Because watch this, once you give God your little, Jesus is going to take that little and he's going to do this. He's going to bless it. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that they brought Jesus the little. They brought him two fish, five loaves of bread. And what did Jesus do? The Bible says that he gave thanks for it. In other words, he blessed it. He blessed the little that he was given. He said thanks to God. He said thanks to the Father for the little that he was given. What I love about this scripture right here, when I was reading this pastor, I saw what I never saw before. Because when the Bible says that he blessed the food or he gave thanks to God for it, I believe in my sanctified imagination that Jesus is far from rude. Jesus is far from rude. Whatever God does for us, does something for us, what do we tell God? We tell him, we tell him, thank you. We give him thanks, right? Here we find that the food was given to Jesus, and Jesus blessed it by giving thanks. But I believe in my sanctified imagination, but not only did he thank God for the little that was given, but I believe he thanked the boy. He thanked the boy for giving his little. It wasn't a large lunch. It was just a little bit. 
but he gave the boy thanks. I appreciate you, little boy, for giving the little bit that you gave, the little bit that you had, which was all that he had. But he gave it. May I submit the question to you, all my brothers and sisters? Brother, my, my brothers and sisters, can God tell you thank you? Is there a little bit that you're giving to God that he can appreciate in you? Can God tell you thank you for your faithfulness? Can God tell you thank you for your dedication? Can God tell you thank you for your giving? Can God tell you thank you for loving him? Can God tell you thank you for obeying him? Can God tell you thank you for loving your brothers and your sisters? Can God tell you thank you? The Bible says that they brought Jesus their little. The Bible says that Jesus blessed it. He gave thanks. Can the Lord give thanks for you trusting him with your little? I said, can the Lord thank you for trusting him with your little? As opposed to you trying to take care of the little by yourself. Can he thank you for trusting him with your little? They brought it to Jesus. He blessed it. My last point is this. After he blessed it, the Bible says he broke it. <laughs> he broke what was already little. Seemingly made it even small. But he broke it with a purpose in mind. He broke it because after he broke it, he commanded his disciples to now distribute that which was broken. In other words, he broke the whole. He broke the whole. So that everybody, watch this, so that everybody could get a part of the whole. He wanted everybody to get a part of the whole. Not less than, but instead he wanted them to get all that they needed. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He blessed it and he broke it. So that everybody there, not only did they eat, but they ate until they were full. Not only till they had enough, but until they had more than enough. So much more that when everybody had eaten until they were filled or full, the Bible says that Jesus said, don't you waste the thing. Go and gather all the food that was not eaten. And what started out with two fish and five loaves turned out to be 12 baskets full of what he had left over, of that which he blessed his people with. That would not have happened had he not broke it so that everybody could get a part of the whole. But I'm just crazy enough to believe that when Jesus broke that bread and began to distribute it, that was a prophetic move on his behalf. Because if you take a journey down to this place called the upper room, where Jesus took his disciples and he had with them what was called the Last Supper. And when he had that, he had some bread and he had some wine. And he said, this bread represents my whole body. Which is what? Which is broken. Which is broken for you. Watch this. As often as you eat of this bread. Ah, oh, shucks. As often as you eat of this bread, you remember my death until I return. In other words, there's enough of me to last you your entire lifetime. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He, he's saying, he's saying what he's saying to them. He, he's saying, he's saying these words. He said simply to them. He said, listen, uh, even as this fish and these five loaves were more than enough, I've come to share with you all this morning uh, that Jesus was saying, I am more than enough. I have everything uh, that you need. Uh, every need uh, in your life, uh, big or small, uh, I'm able to multiply it uh, and give you more than you ever asked for. Uh, I have the uncanny ability uh, to turn those little things uh, and make them great uh, if you just trust me uh, with your little. Uh, is there anybody in the room besides myself uh, that wants to trust God uh, with your little? Is there anybody besides myself uh, that wants more than enough? I want more than enough. The Bible lets us know 
that he's able to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus everything that we need he's able to supply there's no good thing that he'll withhold from those that love the Lord the Bible declares through the writings of Paul that it is written that eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for you God wants to give you more than you could ever ask him for God has a blessing right around the corner with your name on it can you say yes can you say yes can you say yeah Oh, oh, he has more, more than enough. He has more than enough. I want to leave you all with this story, and I'm going to take my seat. I learned this story when I was a little boy. Good God Almighty, I was a little boy, and I went to the Holy Convocation in Memphis, Tennessee, whether well, I was a teenager back in that day. And while I was there at the convocation, I heard a man by the name of Pastor Hutchins, and he gave this testimony. He told this story about an old man, and this old man was a wealthy man. He had houses, and he had land all across the country. He had boats, and he had yachts all across the country. He had investments and portfolios filled with riches and filled with wealth. He was a rich man, y'all. And the story goes on to say this man had a wonderful wife. She was a little younger than him. And he enjoyed spending life with his beautiful young wife. Good God Almighty. And the story goes on to say that this old man and his beautiful wife went on to conceive a child. And she brought forth a beautiful son. But in the transfer in the, tra in the transfer of time, the story goes on to say that the young boy became very sick, even to the point of him dying. And the story goes on to say that after this boy had died, that the man's wife, her spirit had become broken because she had lost her one and only son. And she she too became ill in her body and they believe she too died from having a broken heart and when that lady had died from that broken heart this old man he got that feeling that there was nothing left for him to live for are you all hearing what I'm saying and he too became sick in his body and he later on he too died and after he died there was no one left in the family line uh, to get the inheritance uh, of this old man uh, but the story goes on to say uh, that the lawyer uh, and the probate uh, they got together uh, and they got the man's estate uh, and they said we're going to auction off uh, this man's belongings uh, so the word went out uh, that this man's belongings uh, were about to be auctioned off uh, and people uh, from miles around uh, they came out uh, to see this auction they wanted the men's fine artwork. They wanted the houses and yachts. They wanted all the real estate. They wanted all the fine art and paintings. So they came up and they showed up at the man's house on the stairs of his estate. And the lawyer was on one side. The auctioneer was in the center. Took his gavel. Not the on the podium uh, and said the auction uh, of the old man estate uh, is now open. Uh, first thing uh, on the auction block uh, is a picture of this old man's uh, sick son uh, when they saw uh, the picture uh, of the old man's uh, sick son uh, nobody uh, was interested uh, in the picture uh, of this old uh, feeble looking uh, 
picture of this son. And the story goes on to say that he tried his best to get somebody to bid. And he started off a little bit high, but nobody would bid. Is there anybody that will give? $200. Uh, nobody uh, gave $200. Uh, is there anybody uh, that will give $100? Uh, nobody uh, bid $100. Uh, and he got down uh, to where nobody uh, was putting in the bid. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, a little old lady uh, came walking uh, up to the podium. Uh, and she said, excuse me, sir. Uh, I don't have much. Uh, I only have uh, a little bit. Uh, but I'll bid uh, two dollars uh, for this man's uh, picture uh, of his dead son. Uh, the auctioneer uh, knocked his gavel uh, on the table uh, and said, two dollars uh, going once, uh, two dollars uh, going twice, uh, two dollars uh, three times. Uh, sold uh, to the little old lady uh, for two dollars. Uh, now everybody uh, got excited. Uh, now we can get to uh, the house uh, now we can get to uh, the land uh, now we can get to uh, the riches uh, but the story goes on to say uh, that the man uh, knocked on the table uh, and said ladies and gentlemen uh, the auction uh, is now closed uh, everybody uh, got upset uh, they said what about the house uh, what about the land uh, what about the jewelry uh, what about the estate uh, but the man, he pulled out his will of the old man. And he said, it's written here in the will that the one that gets the son gets everything. Yes. 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 And I'm here to tell you all that that's just like God. Anybody that gets Jesus, the son of God, gets everything, all your needs. He's able to supply everything, the little and the much, everything. <laughs> I got more. I got more. I wish I had a voice. I got more than enough. It doesn't matter how small your little is. You have more than enough. If you give it to God, what is your little? What is your little? It may seem real big to you right now, but it's little to God. And he's able to fix your little. He's able to supply you with all that you need if you just trust him with your little, your career aspirations, your hopes, your dream, your entrepreneurial ideas, those things that seem like they're unattainable in this season right now where it seems like we've lost so much. God wants us to know we have more than enough. Just trust him. Just trust him. And watch God do what the word says, exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think, according to the power that works where? Within us. We have it. And what we have is more than enough. Don't let anybody tell you what you cannot be, what you cannot have, what you cannot do. If you have Jesus, you have more than enough. Everybody here under the sound of my voice and those who are online, we bless God for your presence. And I want to speak specifically to those who are online, those under the sound of my voice. After hearing this message, there have been days in your life where you felt like you did not have enough. Days in life in your time where you felt like you were inadequate, where you were insufficient, where you did not matter. And as a result, you were at that point of giving up and throwing in the towel and giving in. And, and you cried so many tears at night until your pillow is wet from your tears. But God sees you and he hears you and, and he wants you to know that he is there. 
and he is more than enough for you. So I want to pray this prayer with you, those who are watching online. I want to pray, first of all, the prayer of forgiveness and restoration because God is able to save you and heal you and fix you from your sin, sick disease. Not only is he able to to save you from your sins, but he's able to fix whatever situation that you're going through. If you just give God your little, watch God bring forth the increase. How do I know? Because he's more than enough. 5,000 plus children were fed. Men, women, and children were fed. All because Jesus knew he had more than enough. It was a little in their eyes, but it was so much in his hands. So God, this is my prayer for those who are watching on today. That you would touch their hearts. Touch their minds turn their spirits towards you. Anyone listening or watching under the sound of my voice does not know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray right now they'll pray the prayer of the, sin, of the sinner's prayer. Lord God, saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong in your sight. But God, I know that if I put everything in your hands and turn my heart towards you, you'll let me be your Lord and my Savior. You'll be Lord and Savior over my life. So right now, I denounce sin and I ask you to forgive me of every sin past, present, and future, Lord God. Purge my heart. Make me clean. Wash me. Make me whiter than snow. I am sorry for every sin that I've committed, God, and I ask you into my life. And I believe that your son, Jesus the Christ, died for my sin. He raised from the dead on the third day that I might live. So God, I pray and I praise you right now and thank you for coming into my heart and saving me from my sin. And out of the little that I have, God, I trust you with it. And you'll bring for the multiplicity of things in my life that only you can do. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for being my more than enough. I glorify you, and I give you praise. God bless you, those who are online. I pray you are blessed by this word. You have more than enough. Solid Rock, for Gospel Baptist Church, it's my prayer that you receive this word. I needed this word. I needed this word. You might have a real nice car. You might have a cupboard filled with food. And you may have the nicest of clothes and still be in lack of something. If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing at all. If he's not